Alright ladies and gentlemen, my name is Justin Brightup with another episode of The Unboxing Authority. I am on YouTube and Liberty and several uh, sites. Okay, so before we get started here, what we're trying to do today is fix a black screen issue with this computer. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. I haven't tested this yet. The customer just sent me this laptop. I did see the screen um, do something. So that tells me that the screen is probably not bad because I don't see any lights. It's kind of weird. There's no lights on the front, no lights on the top, uh, no lights on the power button. I'm going to check one more thing just to make sure it isn't the backlight here since I did see the screen do something. I'm going to take a bright light and I'm going to shine it uh, right into the, the screen here and I'm not seeing anything that looks like anything so I don't think that we're getting anything there. Okay, so the screen, the, the screen I think works because when I first turned it on, I did see a change in the screen. So what could cause this black screen? What, it doesn't matter if your desktop, PC, laptop, what it is, what could cause this issue? Well, we have a list. This is something you know, I learned in college, this sort of thing. So the first thing is the most recent problem um, that's crept up in laptops and stuff, and that is the EFI BIOS. Um, what can happen is the BIOS can actually get locked up to firmware, and there's ways to reset that. So that's one of the first things I want to try. The second thing is the RAM, the memory in the computer. If it's not functioning properly, the computer may refuse to boot, and it shouldn't just sit here and run like this, though. Number four is the screen, or sorry, number three is the BIOS battery. So the next thing to check uh, possibly would be the BIOS battery. Number four is the screen. We can check, you know, HDMI output, which also can tell us maybe if the video card's working or not. And the customer has said that when he tested HDMI output on this, that it did that it did not work correctly. There was no HDMI output. Now there are function keys on this laptop to tell it to use the external external um, output or not. So we can press our FN button and we can go uh, back and forth with our F keys and see if we can get an external display to come on. However, I'm not necessarily seeing a button that does that. The F4 button looks like the closest one to that. And that didn't change anything there so far. We'd have to hook up an external display. And the last thing, of course, is a video card. Now, if it's a desktop, you can change the video card. If it's a laptop, you may not be able to change the video card. Um, but those are the most common reasons why you get black screen. And usually when you have black screen, it's not going to continue running. The fan's not going to continue running. You're going to have issues. So the first thing I want to try is see if we have a BIOS lockup. Now, I have not looked up this specific model yet to see what the procedure would be for this. It is a Hewlett Packard 15-BA013CL, according to what I have here. So what we're going to do is just some standard stuff like you try on an Acer and some other laptops and see what happens. The first thing I'm going to do is shut this off. So we're going to shut it completely off and we should see that screen do something again. Yep, the screen, uh, when it turns on, it's, it's like it's darker. So that's kind of strange, okay? Um, that could be because of the, 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 the liquid crystal display that it's you know trying to show something or whatever, but we shined the light through it, we didn't see anything, so it's like it's just displaying black. So what I want to do now is I'm going to unplug the power to the laptop. Now this, this can also apply on a desktop. Um, you can shut down you know, all the power, unplug it and everything. But we also got to remove the battery because this is a laptop. So we're going to go ahead and remove the battery out of this laptop. And you know they're all different. They, some, some have batteries in different places. The releases are different here. So we have this tiny little battery because it's a Hewlett Packard, right? And it might have high milliamp hours on it. I don't know. But this is a lightweight battery. It's very small. So, you know, it's probably not going to work real. Okay. Now the next thing to do, we want to reset whatever this lockup might be. So we've unplugged the power, we've taken out the battery, and again, whether this is a desktop or a laptop, we do it the same way. We're going to push the power button here, and nothing's happening, and that's what we want. Now, sometimes what they want you to do right now is leave the battery out, which right there is a hole right here where the battery was, okay, and plug it into external power and try to turn it on. Sometimes that's uh, the next step here in this procedure. And sometimes they just want you to put everything back together and try to turn it on. So uh, what we're going to do is just plug the external power in. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and push the power button and see if anything different happens. If it will start. Sometimes it won't start without the battery. 
Now I did see the screen do something, but I'm not there. The fan finally came on. The fan took a while that time. I don't know if it did before. There was a delay there uh, between the screen going dark and the fan coming on internally. I could get a brighter flashlight to see if the screen is doing anything, but um, right now, like I said, it's just black. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a brighter light while this is running. Okay, so somebody sent me this light to review. I believe it still works. It's the uh, Giga Beam or something flashlight. It's like a 10,000 lumen flashlight. So I'm gonna put that right on the screen and try not to look into it. And I'm still not seeing any kind of display. It's a very hot light, so I gotta be careful not to keep it on the screen too long. But I'm not seeing any kind of uh, anything on the screen. So I definitely don't believe it's booting. Don't believe anything's happening other than the fan is running. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and turn our laptop off again. And the screen changed once again. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on again without the power cord being inserted. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reinsert the battery and everything and try to turn it on. There might be a key combination that we need to hold down while we're turning it on during this process. And this is where I might uh, look online and see if I can find uh, some information about a black screen fix for this uh, laptop. I wanna do all this before I get any more involved. Uh, from what I can see on the bottom of this laptop, the RAM is not easily accessible and it doesn't appear that the battery is either for the BIOS um, without pulling the whole bottom off. So definitely something we you know want to do after we try all this. Um, because whenever you open a laptop, there's usually at least some type of wear or tear on the laptop, some sort of damage. So and then sometimes they tell you to turn on without the without the power supply, um, you know, when you're doing this. And since he said the battery doesn't last very long. Um, perhaps he hasn't tried that yet. So we'll go ahead and push our power button. And there it goes. The black screen came on and now the fan is running. Not doing anything again as far as I know. We'll be patient though. We'll have some patience with it. Because yeah, there's, there's no there's no light coming on behind the screen that I can see. It just gets darker. And yeah, I'm not seeing anything. So we'll go ahead and shut it off. So now what we're gonna do is, again, this seems very silly, but I have seen this work on other laptops. So. So we remove the battery again. We're gonna reset by pushing down our power button. Okay. Now what we're going to do is reinsert our battery. Plug in the power this time, so about the power and the battery in at the same time. After we've done our reset, we see a power light. There's a red light on the side of the laptop next to where the plug goes in. It's the first time I've seen a light on this. Maybe that's a good sign. Now we'll push our power button here. Yeah, I definitely have not seen that red light come on before uh, when I plugged in the power cord. All right, once again, we have nothing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and see if there is a specific procedure for this laptop. All right, so we're gonna try this one more time, but we're gonna do it according to the way the HP says to do it, just to make sure that we've done it correctly. And that is we've already removed our battery. We have the power unplugged, so now we're going to hold down our power button for 15 seconds. Okay, now we're gonna reinsert the power cable, but not the battery, and we're gonna try to turn this on. This is the way that the official Hewlett Packard website says they want us to do it. Now we will press our power button again and see if this fixes anything. Okay, we hear the laptop is running. 
Still not seeing anything on the display. The next option here is to do a BIOS up there, reset, a reset BIOS. We're going to go ahead and reinsert our battery and take the customer's word for it for the time being that we cannot do the external output. And I was correct that the function key and the F4 key are the external video output um, keys. So we're going to go ahead and reinsert the battery. Now what we're going to do is we are going to press and hold the Windows and the B keys. Then we're going to press and hold the power button for one second. One, then let go of all three. This rescue method, we're supposed to wait 40 seconds to see something on the screen. And I'm not seeing anything at this time. So let's continue on to the next step. All right, so I plugged in the HDMI to the laptop. I got it running. I pressed uh, function F4 and nothing's happening over here. To do function F4, you just hold down the FN key and the F4 key, and you see this symbol here where you see a line and a screen and a line. That's supposed to symbolize that. You just have to hold it down and press it once. It's supposed to tell the signal to come out the uh, HDMI port down here, or whatever external display you have, VGA, whatever. And we're just not uh, seeing that happen. Yeah, TV's just not recognizing that at all, so there's nothing going on there. All right, so. Uh, it was on my list, but according to the official Hewlett Packard site, they want us to reseat the RAM, which is actually lazy and wrong. Uh, if you take the RAM out, you want to clean it first before you reseat it, okay? Because otherwise, um, you're just not fixing the problem. Talk to a mechanic who fixes cars, okay? And they're going to tell you that uh, if you don't clean the contacts on things when you're clean, you know. Uh, reseeding contacts then you're not fixing anything because there's still dirty contacts so you need to make sure those contacts are cleaned we need to make sure we have a safe place to put all of our screws so I'm just going to use this old battery container here to stick these screws in sometimes some screws are longer than others on these laptops and sometimes they even use different screws but usually uh, usually they're the same usually sometimes they're just different lengths All the screws that have come out already are different from the others, these first four screws, because they come up out of here, whereas the other ones just kind of spin. And this one's like those ones as well. So we should put these screws in a separate place just because and take a picture uh, with our phone before we continue. That way we'll know um, where the screws go afterwards. Alright, so we took a picture of all the similar screw holes there. And now we got to figure out how to tease these other screws out. You see we can try getting under them with some sort of pick. But again, these screws actually match the other ones. They just don't want to come up out of there. And it actually works a lot better than it does sometimes. So I've had other cases where magnets just don't pull those out at all. Alright, so Hewlett Packard thought that it would be fun to hide some screws under these rubber feet. So the rubber feet do have to come off in order to check the RAM. Now that our screwdriver is magnetized, they just come right out. On this particular model, you do have to remove the CD-DVD drive to get the back off as well. So that's always lots of fun. So there's different ways to get this uh, CD-DVD drive to release. And thankfully on this one, 
Ooh, that's bad. I don't want any of this to be seen. Thankfully on this one, um, it does just slide right out. So that's good. Set that somewhere else for later. Yeah, sometimes you have to open the CD DVD drive before it will remove from a laptop, especially in like older models and stuff. Now, apparently, the best way to take these apart is to open it up. Then you just take your uh, handy dandy plastic pry tool and stick it down in here. You can use a screwdriver, but of course, plastic is better and safer. You're dealing with delicate laptops. And we can see it's free now. The whole thing is moving, so now we're supposed to shut this. Turn it over without it snapping back together. Something is loose. I can hear something moving around. It's probably dust or debris. And this back is supposed to just come right off, and it is. Thankfully. So far, it is coming off. There. Alright. Looks like Hewlett Packard did something right on that one. It comes apart pretty easy if you can find the hidden screws. So, there are two things we can check while this is open. One is our memory module to make sure it's clean. But the other is this BIOS battery right here. This is the BIOS battery. And I do have a uh, voltmeter, so I should be able to check it without removing it, hopefully. Because that plastic um, shield that's holding it down there is not always fun to deal with. So let's go ahead and just set this up here. And we have this on volts. So I'm assuming this is ground. And I'm going to put this up here. We have 3.2 volts. These are supposed to be 3.5 volts, but I think 3.2 will still work. And there are different ways you can do this. You can use two small screwdrivers, or you can use this little thing right here. And we're just going to pull these apart. And the memory will shoot up out of there. And some people will just, uh, like the Hewlett Packard site says, some people just take this out stick it right in the other side and see what happens and that's certainly one idea but we should also check and it looks like there is um, some debris on these although you may not be able to see it so it's a good idea to get a uh, cotton swab and some rubbing alcohol and just clean these off so I'm gonna go do that really quick and I'll be right back alright so I have cleaned this and I can stick it into the same slot with the arrow here um, and put it back in. This is probably the primary slot um, or I can put it in the other side. I want to try it in this slot first and see if anything changes. The other thing I can do and it probably should be done while this laptop is apart is to change this battery. Okay so I tested this battery um, again and it was only 2.9 like volts or something. Uh, this is pretty low so we're going to change this anyway just to make sure that this isn't the problem because you know computers can be picky when it comes to these batteries so we're gonna go ahead and put a fresh one in I need to order some of these okay so now we won't know for sure if it was the RAM or the battery uh, that was the problem on this particular um, laptop but we're gonna go ahead and put it back together um, at least as much as we need to to turn it on all right, this laptop's running right now. I went ahead and put in the BIOS reset mode one more time just to see uh, what it would do. So I went ahead and changed the uh, module to the other uh, module slot just to see if that was going to fix anything. And it hasn't made any change. Also, I changed that uh, BIOS battery in there. It's got a new one. Um, so what could be wrong here? What's going on? Well, at this point, from what I can tell, it's either something on the main board, possibly a graphic card, or it is the memory module that's in there. It could have a bad memory module. At this point, what we can do with this is we can either purchase another memory module or find one that's compatible and insert it in here and see if that um, fixes the thing. All right, so we got our laptop back apart again, and this time we ordered some replacement memory. 
This time I have um, two four gigabyte modules and technically that should make the laptop run faster. I don't know if it will run more power efficient or cooler, but it definitely should run faster with both um, memory modules installed instead of one because they are both rated for the same speed as the previous um, single eight, eight gigabyte memory module. So let's go ahead and um, widen this up here. We can get this inserted, there we go. There we go, that slot was being stubborn, but I got it in there. All right, so without screwing this back together, I reinstalled the battery and the power cable, and we are gonna see if this thing will turn on. The laptop appears to be doing the same thing as before. So now what we can do is we can move the RAM chips around from slot to slot one at a time and see if either of the RAM sticks are bad or if one of the slots, memory slots is bad in the motherboard. And we can uh, help rule out everything on this laptop. Okay, so this laptop is dead. I'm gonna run you through what I did to diagnose it here. So other than the things we've already went over in the video, um, what I have done is I tried removing the hard drive because that's an old school technique. You remove anything that's not essential from the system. I removed this USB uh, expansion card over here. I also removed the wireless chip right here for Wi-Fi. I don't think it has a Bluetooth function. Um, I also tried reconnecting the CD DVD drive. I tried using all of the different RAM sticks in every different configuration that I could think of to do. I also removed the battery and shorted out the terminals there while it was disconnected. And I held down the power button for several seconds, making sure everything was shorted out, reinserted the battery, stuck it back in, did everything. I visually inspected the entire circuit board. I noticed that while it was running, there was no heat apparently coming from this CPU, GPU, and I do believe this is both the CPU and the GPU. It's some sort of APU or something like that. And I also made sure these connections for the monitor, the power, I think that's the power connection, and the Wi-Fi, or sorry, the, uh, the web camera, uh, were properly seated and everything was working there. I did not want to remove the web camera connector because that would have required me to remove other connectors and there just wasn't enough slack to reconnect it. So I left it plugged in. The capacitors all look good. I don't see any damage to any solder wells, solder joints, or chips on uh, the motherboard. So at this point, I think we can successfully diagnose that it's dead. Now, if I were to send this off to Lewis Rossman or someone like that, uh, they could inspect this board and they would probably, uh, they might determine that it'd be too expensive for the consumer because it might have to replace the CPU or something like that. The other uh, issue on this board is that you could technically remove every one of these plastic uh, pieces that are on the board and then stick the entire thing in the oven and try it, and paper too. You have to remove all the paper and the plastic, anything flammable or that could melt and put it in the oven and try to reflow all the solder joints but that's very risky and whether or not we could remove all of these plastic uh, motherboard connectors and put them back on is another story as well for a free diagnostic on this laptop for someone i think i have probably exhausted all of my resources and we did put a new battery in it and we did buy a new ram for it as well two new memory modules and unfortunately, um, we haven't seemed to make any progress other than a successful diagnosis of the motherboard. Um, also, I see this connector over here. I'm not entirely sure what that's for. That could be for the keyboard and the mouse, although this one is definitely for uh, the buttons for the mouse right there. But I'm not exactly sure what this ribbon is for. I'd have to remove the motherboard to find out more. But uh, also, of course, these connections are all integrated into the motherboard. There's nothing to disconnect here uh, to determine that there's a separate controller that's causing a problem. Um, I figure if I have to disconnect the mouse uh, to diagnose this, then it's a failure because we would have to replace the mouse, the keyboard, all of that. And I mean, it should be working. There should not be a problem with the, the mouse or the mouse controller. 
There appears to be another board down here that controls something as well. That that just appears to be the touchpad, I think. So it looks like the uh, motherboard connects to the mouse um, buttons here and the touchpad right there. So this could be for the keyboard. I'm not really sure. There's also another connector over here that just says MB, and I don't know what um, if that's if that's for the fan or what that's for here. Um, it looks like I think the fan has its own other connector over here. That's that's about it, and this is dusty, but it's not so dusty that there should be a problem with it. This should not run um, as far as this fan over here. So I think that's a successful uh, diagnosis. And so now at this point, what I need to decide is whether I'm going to remove the hard drive to back up the information on the hard drive for the customer or just reassemble this with the hard drive left in there. I think that the wisest thing to do would be to remove... Uh, the hard drive. There is one other problem with that, however, I just want to let you guys know about. This um, hard drive connector here, there is nothing holding it in place. Uh, the, the hard drive mount is the only thing that's holding the hard drive in place and is also holding um, this thing in place just when it's connected. So uh, when you remove the hard drive, this little thing could break really easy. And um, so it's very important that when you undo these screws here, here, and here, those three screws, that you hold on to the hard drive and not let it drop because it could break uh, the controller off for the, or the connector I should say, for the hard drive there. And that could be catastrophic. That's that's about it. All right, well, thanks for watching the video. Um, please consider giving a donation on my channel. And I hope this has helped you regardless of what laptop or what brand you're using because these are tried and true methods for diagnosing laptops and desktops as well. Thanks so much and God bless you. Please check out all my affiliate links and all the other fun stuff at the end of my video. Do you want to learn to follow the commands of the almighty one true God? If you do, go to ChristianCourts.com. There's a free PDF book you can download, audio book, and video where you can listen and learn God's laws. Make America great again. Help establish Christian law and communities all across the world. God bless you. This video is brought to you today by Blazing Hog 4G LTE. Get blazing fast internet speeds up to 150 megabits per second. You get $49.99 off when you use the code and the phone number in the description of this video or the code right below my finger here, the coupon code. It works anywhere, rain or shine, within five miles of an AT&T or T-Mobile cell tower. Check it out. All you have to do is call 1-888-306-7062 and mention account number SR2808 when you call. Now enjoy the rest of this video. That's an order, son. Don't throw your computer into the recycle bin. Make your computer great again. Go to www.justuselinux.com.
So we take the frozen chicken here, okay, frozen chicken, put it into the microwave like this. And we're gonna start our microwave. It's done since it's defrosted. So here's here's what I get every time I try to cook a frozen bird in this microwave. So it's a threat to our family. It's a threat to chicken farmers. It's a threat to everything because I mean that's like some sort of abomination there, isn't it? I mean. Chickens have taken over my YouTube channel. They're in control. They're in control of the camera. I need your help. So make sure that you give to my Patreon and give into all their demands. Check out all my, my links in the description. Subscribe. Quick, because if you don't, I don't know what they're going to do next. Okay, so what happens? We beat the game, now what happens? Bonus. And? Oh, we get to see the credits, okay. I am the commander! Commander of the armies!